Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Focus Odin 5 F3. This foldable 3D printer is Focus's first printer and aims to position itself as a beloved entry-level model. So, how does it unfold? Let's find out. Before we begin, the Odin 5 F3 was sent to me for review by Focus. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. Now let's get into it. The Focus Odin 5 F3 is a filament-based 3D printer with a max print volume of 235mm by 235mm by 250mm. It has a very clean design, with flat ribbon cables bringing power to the x-axis and hot end. The hot end is a 0.4mm volcano-style hot end, with a longer heat zone allowing for more time for the filament to melt. That generally allows for faster prints. The hot end is fed 1.75mm filament from the direct drive extruder located right above it. The extruder also has a built-in filament detector, which will pause the prints if you run out of filament. Completing the hot end assembly is the single cooling fan. The fan works great, but when running at 100%, it has a rather loud high-pitched whine. Lowering the speed to 98% eliminates that high-pitched noise, so I'd recommend setting that in your slicer. All axes move on V-slot rubber wheels on the aluminum extrusions of the frame. The X-axis is supported by dual Z-axis motors. This is a very stable arrangement, and I have noticed zero Z-wobble on any of my test prints. Moving down to the print bed, we find a glass build plate that clips onto the heated surface, and is supported by easy-to-use leveling screws on the four corners. This is one of the better glass build plates that I've used. PLA grips it quite well while printing, but prints also pop right off as it cools down. It is also very flat, I could consistently print over the entire surface. On the front of the base is the 3.5 inch touchscreen display. The touchscreen works well, but I feel the menu options are a little unintuitive. After using it for a while, I still find myself trying to remember where I need to go to change the filaments. There's three different options, auto load on the main screen, then filament and extrusion in the tool screen. But auto load and extrusion only work if the nozzle is already heated, and it will grind the extruder gears if you press it while cold. The display can show you a preview of the object to be printed if you use Cura and install the MKS extension. That will save a thumbnail into the G-code. Around the side of the base, you can find the micro SD card slot and the USB Type-B port to connect to your computer or Raspberry Pi. And around the back is the power cord and switch. The bottom can be removed to reveal the MakerBase MKS Robin Nano 1.2 control board. That is a 32-bit control board with TMC2208 stepper drivers, and runs a version of Marlin 2 firmware. The stepper drivers are near silent, and with the fan at 98%, it is very comfortable to be in the same room while printing. The Odin 5 arrives in a very appealing box, that you'd expect to see on the shelves of your local big box store. Great design and presentation. Opening the box reveals the folded printer. Assembly should be simply a matter of unfolding the X and Z gantry, screwing in the four screws, and plugging in the two ribbon cables. Extremely easy. However, in my case, it was not that easy. As I was peeling off the plastic from the bed, I noticed that the bed lifted. It turns out that the bearings holding the bed on were sliding out of the wheels. That shouldn't happen. So I reached out, and they sent me their Focus Odin 5 Accessory Kit. This $30 kit contains spare wheels, two extra hot end assemblies, extra filament detector, and ribbon cables. Reading other reviews and forum posts, Focus has some quality control issues, and this accessory kit is a necessity for all owners. At $30, it is a pretty good value, but it is unfortunate that you'll likely need to replace a part sooner rather than later. They do have good instructions for replacing the part, and with all four bed wheels replaced a few minutes later, I was ready to level the bed. There is no auto bed leveling, so you have to manually tram the bed using the four screws. The UI has options to move the hot end around to the four corners, so that was easy. The last bit of assembly is to add the spool holder to the top. There are so many posts about the spool holder being too short for standard spools, which is true if you assemble the holder the way the instructions tell you. However, if you flip the spool holder 180 degrees, then the included spool holder fits every brand of 1kg filaments that I have. So I think it is just a misprint in the instructions. As of Cura 5.1, there is no built-in profile for the Focus Odin 5, but I've been using the Creality Ender 3 profile on the Odin 5 with no issues. I feel like I talked about the printer a lot longer than normal. Let's finally take a look at how well the Odin 5 prints. You can find links to the settings I used and models on my 3D print log page linked in the description. Spoilers, the Odin 5 F3 prints extremely well. They included 12 different test G-code files, so first I printed the cat. 
Besides some stringing on the ears, the model printed very well. The flat sections are nice and smooth, and the layers seem very consistent. The included 3D Benchy shows a lot more stringing throughout the prints, but it looks like the retraction was only set to 3mm. Increasing that will remove the stringing, as we'll see in future prints. The sides of the Benchy are smooth, and the hull has no defects, which indicate adequate cooling. This octopus is a good print to test the bed adhesion, as each individual section needs to remain stuck to the bed. And it turned out great. Again, the layers are consistent, and the overhangs on each of the joints have no sagging. With an increased retraction distance, there is no stringing between the segments either. And as soon as the print bed cooled, the print popped right off. Very impressive. Testing out the details with a 0.1mm layer height, I printed this realistic Bulbasaur, which was scaled to the max size of the print bed. And it is a gorgeous print. There are a couple of areas near the top of the head that hints at the slightest amount of Z-wobble, but I think that this is a good showcase of what this printer is capable of. With the long heating area of the volcano nozzle, that could sometimes cause issue with retractions. So I printed this lattice box, whose bottom, top, and sides are completely open lattices. This causes thousands of retractions over the span of the prints. And the Odin 5 F3 handled it well. There was only one small section at the very top of the back that had any issues, and the rest of the lattice was flawless. I was impressed. I wasn't sure how this would turn out. The bottom front edges started to warp, but that's not unexpected when the entire bottom is individual lattice. Finally, let's give Spiral Vase Mode a try, scaled up to the full 250mm height. The Odin 5 was able to print the Spiral Vase Mode with no hitching or stuttering. However, the printer maxed out at 247mm at height before the Z-axis met its limit. You might be able to squeeze out another couple of millimeters by lowering the Z end stop and tightening the bed screws, but it is disappointing when a printer advertised for 250mm doesn't allow for that out of the box. And although I did have to remove the bed to replace the wheels, I didn't adjust the Z-axis end stop, so this is the height that it was sent from the factory. The Odin 5 F3 has a filament runout sensor, which will pause the prints and give an audible beeping if it detects missing filament. You can easily use the menus to load in new filaments, and it resumes where it left off. Although, the moving back to position is extremely slow. And although they don't advertise it, the Odin 5 also has power loss recovery. I was pleasantly surprised to see it asked to resume the print after I powered it off, and it heated back up and resumed without issue. I cut the filament three times, and cut the power once in this test cube, and while you can definitely see where it resumed, it behaved as well as I could expect. The primary issue with the Focus would be quality control. For a new company entering the 3D printing market, some might expect some rough edges. The issue I ran into was easily fixed with a couple of replacement parts. I am happy to see that their accessories kit is only $30, and the company seems responsive for support issues. Their Facebook group is also probably one of the most active 3D printer groups that I've been a part of, so that is encouraging to see. Other users have reported clogged nozzles, but the accessories kit includes two full replacement hot ends, and after a couple hundred hours of printing, I haven't experienced that issue myself. The other negatives I've already touched on. The cooling fan has a high-pitched whine when at 100% speed, but dropping it down to 98% eliminates that noise. And finally, the UI of the control panel can be a little confusing, but neither of these are showstoppers. In conclusion, I found the Focus Odin 5 F3 very easy to work with. My prints turned out great, and I'm impressed with how well the glass bed performed. It has a stylish presentation, from the showy box it arrived in to the elegant ribbon cables. The foldable term is more for marketing than being beneficial in practice, as I can't see anyone folding the printer back up to transport it. But it is an interesting solution to the initial assembly. The dual Z-axis makes for a stable print, and combined with the direct drive volcano nozzle, you can push out some serious prints. If Focus can resolve the quality control issues, I'm excited to see what the future holds for the brand. Focus's website has the Odin 5 F3 listed for $289. US that positions the Focus solidly in the pack of entry-level printers with a 235mm bed size. If you are thinking of picking one up, I'd highly encourage getting the $30 accessories kit, just in case. So thank you all for watching my review of the Focus Odin 5 F3. Let me know what you think about the Focus in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future review videos. My studio is currently packed with new printers just waiting for me to finish their reviews. So, thank you all for watching, I'll see you all next time.